Welcome to a lesson on the characteristics of graphs. Let's first discuss the vertical and horizontal intercepts of a graph. The vertical intercept is the point at which the graph crosses the vertical axis, which is this axis here, sometimes referred to as the y-axis. So the point on this axis where the graph crosses or intersects is the vertical intercept. We're asked to complete the following statements. The input value of the vertical intercept is always what value? So let's plot several points on the vertical axis, give the coordinates, or give the ordered pair for each point, and see what we discover. Let's look at these seven points on the vertical axis. The coordinates of this point of the ordered pair would be zero comma six, it would have zero comma four, zero comma two, the origin zero comma zero, zero comma negative two, zero comma negative four, and zero comma negative six. So by analyzing these ordered pairs, notice how the input value or the first value of every ordered pair is always zero. So the input value of the vertical intercept is always zero. The coordinates of the vertical intercept will be, well we already know that the first value of the ordered pair of the input is going to be zero, and the second value of the ordered pair of the output is going to be the value on the vertical axis, which again will always be the output. So the vertical intercept is always the ordered pair, zero comma, the output. A horizontal intercept is a point at which the graph crosses the horizontal axis, which is this axis here. Remember, this is the axis where we find the input values, sometimes referred to as x values. We want to complete the two statements here on the right. The output value of the horizontal intercept is always what value, and then the coordinates of the horizontal intercept will be given by what ordered pair. So again, let's plot several points on the horizontal axis, then look at the ordered pairs or coordinates of each point. So starting on the right, this would be six comma zero, this would be four comma zero, this would be two comma zero, this would be the origin zero comma zero, this is negative two comma zero, negative four comma zero, and negative six comma zero. So notice how for all the points on the horizontal axis, which is where we would find the horizontal intercept, the second value of the ordered pair, or the output, is always zero. So the output value of the horizontal intercept is always zero, which means the coordinates of the horizontal intercept, or the ordered pair for the horizontal intercept, would always be the input value found on the horizontal axis, comma, zero. So input, comma zero would be the coordinates of a horizontal intercept. Here we're asked to identify the vertical and horizontal intercepts of the graph below. Notice how the graph crosses or intersects the vertical axis at this point here, which has coordinates zero comma negative six. And this graph intersects the horizontal axis at two points, at this point here and this point here. So this graph has two horizontal intercepts. The ordered pair or coordinates for this point would be three comma zero, and the coordinates or ordered pair for this point would be negative two comma zero. So the vertical intercept would be the point zero comma negative six, and there are two horizontal intercepts. We have the point negative two comma zero, as well as three comma zero. Now let's talk about the behavior of graphs described as increasing, decreasing, or constant. A graph is increasing if as the inputs increase, the outputs increase. Which also means, if we read the graph from left to right, if it's going uphill, the graph is increasing. As an example, notice how this line is increasing, because from left to right it goes up, which also means as the inputs increase, the outputs increase. But of course a graph doesn't have to be a line to be increasing, it could also be a curve that might look something like this, or even something like this. Both of these graphs are going uphill from left to right, which means as the inputs increase, the outputs increase. A graph is decreasing if as the inputs increase, the outputs decrease, which means if we read the graph from left to right, if it's going downhill, the graph is decreasing. So as a line, it would look something like this, going down from left to right. Of course, it could also be a curve that might look something like this. Or even like this. 
Again, as the inputs increase, the outputs decrease, or as they move from left to right, the graph goes downhill. And then finally, a graph is constant if as the inputs increase, the outputs do not change. So if we read the graph from left to right, this means the graph doesn't go uphill or downhill, it would stay horizontal, and therefore a graph that is constant would look like this. As we move from left to right, the graph does not go up or down because the outputs don't change. For our last example, on the graph below, we're asked to use a highlighter to identify where the graph is increasing. So if we read the graph from left to right, we want to highlight the part of the graph that's going uphill. That would be the part of the graph that is increasing. So notice how starting on the left, this piece of the graph is going uphill from left to right, and therefore the graph is increasing over this interval. As the inputs increase, the outputs increase. But then notice how from the input value of negative three all the way to the input value of negative one, the graph is going downhill, and therefore it's decreasing over this interval. We only want to highlight the interval or part of the graph that's increasing. But notice how from the input value of negative one to the input value of positive one, the graph is going uphill, and therefore the graph is increasing over this interval, meaning from left to right the graph is going uphill. Then from the input value of positive one to the input value of positive three, the graph is going downhill, so it's decreasing. But then from the input value of three to the right, the graph is going uphill, so again the graph is increasing. As the inputs increase, the outputs increase over this part of the graph. So we are done with this question, but I do want to put out a couple more things. Notice how when the graph changed from increasing to decreasing, we had a high point on the graph, which we say is a local maximum. So a high point is a local maximum, a low point is a local minimum. And sometimes you'll hear it referred to as relative minimum and relative maximum. So where the function changes from increasing or decreasing, we have a relative or local maximum, and we say it occurs at the input value of negative three, and the local maximum value is the output value of five. Notice where the graph changes from decreasing to increasing, we have a low point. So we have a local minimum here. We say it occurs at the input value of negative one, and the local minimum value is positive one, the output value. So again, it changes from increasing or decreasing at this point, so we have a local maximum, and at this point it changes from decreasing to increasing, and therefore we have a local minimum. I hope you found this helpful.